Squire David, Book One, A Brown Kind of Day, a Van Dragon Studio production. Follow me on YouTube. Meet David. He's very bored. He's having a very brown kind of day. Not only that, his hair is brown and his eyes are brown. David lives in a brown house and is wearing brown clothes. His family has a brown cow and a brown dog. Even the stick he picks up to play with is brown. David is tired of brown. David wants to grow up to be a knight. He wants to have the shiniest armor and the coolest weapon. David pretended to kill the biggest dragon ever. That, he decided, could be brown. Maybe that is because the tree he was pretending was a dragon was brown. While David was pretending to be a knight, he saw his father. David's father was talking to Mrs. Simmons. She was very upset because the wagons from the farming village had not come yet and winter was coming soon. That was when David got an idea. It really was not a very good idea, but it seemed like one at the time. David looked around for an even bigger stick. Then he went off into the forest. David saw his chance. There were only three ways to become a knight. You had to be born royal, you had to be rich, or you had to be a hero. David was a poor woodcutter's son. Hero was his only chance and this was his chance to be a hero. David stopped when he reached the river. This was the farthest he had ever been from home. Still, it was too late to make it home before dark. Oh! David heard the howl of wolves. He started running, but David was too smart to think he could outrun a pack of wolves. There's one thing a boy who lives in the woods gets good at. That is climbing trees. Climbing is not a thing that wolves can do. The night is cold and wet. And David is scared. He covers himself with his cape. He is sure he will never get a wink of sleep. David woke up the next morning surprised to find how high he had climbed. From here he could see half the forest. David saw a merchant hauling his goods along the road towards Brownsville. Suddenly four goblins jumped out of the bushes and took the merchant hostage. David watched. He wanted to help, but he was scared. David knew he would never be a knight. The goblins took the merchant right under the tree where David was hiding. Right now, David was very glad his clothes were brown. David stayed in the tree watching the goblins until they went to a small village. David saw a castle in the distance. It gave him an idea. David climbed to the very tip top of the tree and tied his cloak like a flag. Then David went to the road and piled two gourds and a log next to the rock where the goblins attacked the man. Then David ran to the castle. David ran all day. It was almost dark when he got to the castle. He saw a man standing by the gate 
wearing armor. Are you a knight? David asked. No, I'm a guard. The guard took David to see the king. David told his story to the king. You did the right thing. Goblins are small, but they are mean. Can you lead my knights there in the morning? If you were a man, I would knight you. As things are, my youngest son needs a squire. Would you like to be one? The king's son stepped out. He lifted his thumb and squinted one eye, like David's father used to do when he was deciding to chop a tree. He'll do very nicely, said the prince. David got a new tabard and a new horse and a staff to use as a weapon. All of them were brown. David looked at the top of the staff. It was coated in shiny metal. That made David smile. Maybe that's what makes life good, David thought. The shiny bits in one's brown life. The end.